Hello, and welcome back to Coffee and Kale. My name is Nicole. Today we are joined by Cliff Lovett. He is the proprietor of Salad Works in DC, and we're doing a small business spotlight. So we're gonna talk about the thought process to getting into a small business, how you do it, lessons learned. If that sounds interesting, please keep watching. All right, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. I of appreciate course. it. Of course. On what turned out to be a rainy day, we were talking about earlier how you'd rather just stay wherever you are. So thank you for coming out today to join me. Anytime. So we're doing a small business spotlight on what it takes, the thought process about going from corporate America, can I call it corporate your background, or a more established version of income earning? Absolutely. <laughs> to I a small business? Definitely consider it corporate America. Yeah. So tell me your background. Let's start there and then kind of plant the seed for what made you decide to get into small business ownership. Okay. So I am a pharmacist. Okay. Um, graduated from Howard University. From my doctor in pharmacy, H-U. You <laughs> one and only. <laughs> ah. uh, you know. So... Uh, Graduated from Howard, got my doctorate in pharmacy. I started okay. working at CVS. I worked at okay. CVS, um, you know, while in school, and then about three years uh, or four years after graduation. Okay. Um, then moved on to Kaiser Permanente um, as a pharmacy supervisor. Joined the company as a pharmacy supervisor. Uh, managed pharmacies in D.C., Maryland, uh, mainly D.C. and Maryland. Okay. Um, but I also did personal training um, on the side as well. So. I uh, worked for LA Fitness on the okay. side and uh, did that uh, and eventually, you know, started my own personal training company, Savage Life Fitness, um, which I hope to turn into a gym brand one day. We'll but, put the information in the description box, Savage Life Fitness. Let's not gloss over that. Okay. So wait, let me interrupt you real quick. So you were working as a pharmacist full time while doing these things on the evenings, weekends, before and after work. Yes. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so... I did all that because I have a, you know, medicine, fitness, um, and now healthy eating. Mm -hmm. it, call, it all intertwines together. So I have a passion for helping people. Okay. Um, I got into pharmacy uh, because I wanted to help people. Um, but as I worked as a pharmacy a pharmacist, I was, you know, I kind of see that, uh, you know, people become dependent on certain medications. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not really the answer to health. Um, so okay. that also steered me into going into personal training um, because I felt like that was a good avenue to kind of help people um, before they progress into certain different uh, mm. types of comorbidities or medications. Um, and, you know, I saw that that was not enough. My vision was bigger. Um, so... That's what uh, kind of spearheaded me into wanting to go my own business. But okay. uh, really a conversation between friends okay. um, led me into thinking about it deeper. Um, uh, I have a group of friends. We're all successful. Yeah. Um, so we started talking together about what can we do to make more money? You okay. know, what can we invest in? Everybody's doing the stock market. Yeah. Um, you know, real estate, real I'm estate. sure that usually comes up in those uh, conversations. Yep. Yeah. Everybody, uh -huh. you know, and a, a lot of people had real estate ideas. Okay. A lot of people had stock market ideas. Um, we even, you know, did a couple of uh, stock market plays and okay. <laughs> came up a little short on some of that them. That happens. Um, but so I started looking into, uh, opening up a business, okay. you know, brick and mortar or, or something else like that. So uh, I started looking into franchises. Okay. Um, and I wanted to also do something that aligned with my passion. Okay. Now, uh, why franchises? Because franchises is a little bit more structured. So, okay. you know, with us, none of us having a degree in business. I see. Um, I thought, you know, what's something that, you know, we could get into. Um, there is something structured for us to follow. Uh and still be able to all live our lives normally and effectively. Okay. Um, so there's kind of a roadmap there. You don't have to create everything from exactly. cradle to grave. Got it. Exactly. Okay. Um, so that option, uh, I thought franchises would be great. Okay. Um, and I also wanted something that kind of aligned with my views. Like I didn't want to, you know, open up a McDonald's or, okay. you know, a Chick-fil-A. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people look into those things um, 
not that those are easy to get into anyway, mm-hmm. um, but it doesn't align with my my vision okay. of where what I want to do uh, for people and give back to the community. Okay. So you had a couple criteria. I don't want to, to disrupt your train of thought, mm-hmm. but established business, align with your vision, and I'll make you some money. Absolutely. Okay. I'm there. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so through my research, um, I found SaladWorks. Okay. All right. Um, salad works was the first, uh, um, you know, there's many different salad, salad establishments. Yeah. Um, you know, you got your chopped, your sweet green, um, you know, different, uh, places like that, sure. um, that are popping up. Now there's even more green leaf and others that are, that are coming. Okay. Salad works was the first one in 1986 okay. that was, uh, established, um, so I did my research. I actually went to their headquarters. Okay. Um, you know, spoke with you know the people at their corporation. Um, tried the food. Yeah. Fell in love with it. Okay. Um, so I brought it back to my friends. I said, yeah. "Hey guys, you know, this is what I found. This is the research that I've done. Um, the food is great. Yeah. Um, this is what I want to do, and this is why I want to do it. Talk yeah. to me about my passion. My passion for uh, healthy eating." Um, my passion for helping people yeah. and I, my vision became to, a little bit more full as far as I, see. I want to bring healthy eating establishments, um, help the communities that are underprivileged, sure. you know, the ones that, you know, don't have, uh, the options to going to a, uh, Sweet Green or Salad Works um, okay. or anything like that, but they have a McDonald's there. Uh, so they location a was a, a big piece of it too to help yeah. bring your vision to light. Okay, absolutely. Okay, um, you know they have a Popeyes. Um, yeah, you know, and and they don't have a gym there yeah, okay. either. <laughs> so, okay, okay. Um, that's that was the beginning of. Uh, I mean, that wasn't the end. That that was where I wanted to go or okay. where I want to go um, okay. with it. Um, so I brought this to my friends. All right, they loved it. Uh, Everybody's like, yeah, 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 let's do this. But then it comes time to pay. Okay. Right? Uh, you got to put your money where your mouth is. And here's a good pivot. So you've figured it out. You've you've set your criteria. You've found something that meets that criteria. And now it's time to pull the trigger, so to speak. Yes. So how did you overcome this financing hurdle when your friends start kind of backing out one um, by one? So one friend uh, wanted to go forward with okay. me. Okay. Um, and it's like 12 of us. <laughs> okay. So we went from 12 to 2. <laughs> 12 I'm with two. it. That's a, a quick funnel. Um, okay. One friend was still still in it, right? Okay. Um, you do, when you're going into a franchise, you do have to have um, a certain amount of money on hand. There's like a net worth test or an asset test or yes. something like that? Okay. Um, and so if, if you do have that amount of money, it yeah. allows you to go forward, you know, with even pursuing the avenue. So So they're interviewing you, the franchise owner, you're the franchisee, right? So the organization is interviewing you to see if you meet their criteria through this financing piece. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Um, And so me and my friend, we we met the criteria. So we were able to go forward from there. Okay. Um, Now, as far as um, that initial investment, um, we had the finances to make that initial investment. Okay. and then after that, you know, for financing the rest, um, you know, you, that's when you have to look into other options such as small business loans, mm-hmm. um, you know, or private investing. Um, the route we went is uh, getting a small business loan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How was that? Tell me more about the, the SBA piece of it. We have other videos on this channel about small business investing for those of you that want to click around. But what was your experience? Like you, you've surmounted these first hurdles, right? You figured it out. You got approved by the franchise, the organization. You have a partner. Now you need to get an investment. Why did you pick small business versus the other, small business loan versus the others? Um, just because, um, I guess the protections around it. We went and talked okay. to the multiple banks, um, yeah. you know, uh, to try to get funding. Okay. Um, the, the thing is, when you when you're going around talking to these banks and things like that, a lot of times they will turn you down because you don't have the business experience. Ah, okay. um, a lot of uh, banks want you to have at least a year um, mm. of uh, having a, a business available or open okay. uh, before they will even consider you. Okay. Um, so we, 
we got a lot of no's, okay. right? Um, you know, for any type of, in, in, uh, you know, funding. Yeah. Um, okay. So what we did do, uh, we uh, reached out to, or at least the, the uh, franchise, um, they uh, talked about Bowfly. So Bowfly okay. was this company that um, gets uh, people who are interested in starting a business in touch with uh, banks or investors that are willing to oh, actually um, invest in you. And there's a, a, a fee up front, of course, oh, for them okay. to do their groundwork. Um, but if you pay people to do stuff, yeah. they find a way to get you in the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we did, uh, you know, put forth some money for, to have Bowfly mm -hmm. to find um, a bank that would uh, allot us a small business loan. Okay. So that's how we ended up with the SBA. Okay. Um, because finding funding uh, was not the easiest thing to I do. I can imagine. So Bowfly does that. I've never heard of them before, and we'll link it down below. They does that. They do that groundwork to say, here's the profile of the person that needs the money. Mr. Bank, are you willing to take this person or this conglomerate of people on? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So we've come up with the concept. We have found partners. We found financing. You open your doors. Like, what happens next? Oh, then you get to fun. design it. Or what? <laughs> That's <laughs> that sounds like the fun begins, part to me. Right? Okay. Um, so, at that point, you got to find where do you want okay. to do this. And actually, really, that comes kind of before you even get the loan, right? Okay. Um, you've, you've got to actually once you find your location of where you want to open, um, then you have to. Um, and you get your loan, yeah. you know, then it's finding a contractor. Okay. It's uh, finding an architect. Okay. Um, and uh, unfortunately for our, me and my business partner, we actually found a criminal. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. As the first, uh, the, the first, uh, yeah. the first architect slash uh, contractor okay. um, was a scheme. Okay. okay. Uh, so that actually threw us for a loop. How did you recover from that? Uh, still recovering. Okay, um, that's fair. <laughs> that's, that that's was fair. A, a, a rough go. And um, okay. that is also, too, what kind of led me and my business partner at that time astray. Like, oh, we, okay. we separated ways. Okay. Um, but I'm very resilient. I'm okay. a person that does not give up. Okay. Um, so, you know, I worked with the bank. We were able to um, increase the loan. Okay. Uh, but uh, we were able to still get the funding to go forward and open the business. Okay. And how did you find the right person or people that were not criminals the second time around? Um, so a little more research, a little bit more help with from the franchise as far as looking. Uh, okay. Um, so, you know, started interviewing more people. I found a few okay. good people who, uh, in the area um, and, you know, some of the previous work they did. Uh, you know, looked at it. And then uh, mm -hmm. Franchise also had some people that they, you know, talked to. Actually, it wasn't the franchise himself. It was a person that worked with them who actually had a background in, in contracting. Oh, uh, okay. Um, okay. He's like, hey, I know these guys. I know these people. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, he put us in touch with them. And they were actually willing to help us out or, you know, help me out and finish the project um, with without really increasing the overhead as much. Okay, right? what do you mean by not increasing the overhead? So they basically said, okay, I know you, you, know, you went through this. Yeah. Um, we're gonna finish the project for you. Um, normally, you know, really it's gonna, it really would normally cost double, which is what, the quote where we were getting uh, okay. from other people. Um, okay. Cause we, you know, we were taking quotes and everything. Um, but they pretty much did the project without, mm -hmm. uh, without really, they didn't really take home much of anything. Okay. Um, okay. And they just did it kind of as a, you know, we'll do business again. Yeah. You know, okay. And that's the person that the franchisor, is that the right word to yeah. say, yeah. put you in touch with? A person that worked with them. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So now the doors are open. Now the doors now are what? open. Now <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, and now, you know, it, it is, the next thing is running a business, right? Okay. Um, getting people in. Because okay. my first thoughts when I got into this, you build it, they will come. Yeah. Right? That's kind of my philosophy on life. But go <laughs> ahead. Please dismantle that for me. Uh -huh. um, 
And in today's world, that's not the case, right? Okay. Um, I'm in a wonderful location. Yeah. Um, tons of traffic, tons of foot traffic. Yeah. Um, I I originally thought that people would just be running in there. My lines okay. would be long. Okay. Um, but, you know, we opened the doors and it was on a rainy day like today. Okay. Right? And uh, it wasn't really, it wasn't busy, right? Okay. And, you know, the first few months was just like, yeah. All right, what's going on? Yeah. You know, well, this will live on forever. Tell them where you are. Where are you located? <laughs> Three Twenty Florida Avenue, Northeast, Washington D.C. Um, <laughs> Salad Works. Please come check us out. Um, okay, so business is always appreciated, and you'll enjoy the food. And the customer service is amazing. It is. I can attest to that. Yeah. I have eaten there. It's very good. Okay, so you open the doors. People didn't quite come like you thought they would. What happened? So, I started to look into. Some people started reaching out, right? Okay. Um, you know, people who were, you know, marketing. We did, I tried different things. I did a ad on the metro station. Okay. Um, you know, put up a poster. I got maybe a couple people in the door. Really? Okay. Um, I, uh, you know, you know, did marketing in, you know, Popville community. You know, okay. there's things here and there. Um, you know, I was trying to do social media myself. Yeah. I stink at uh, social media. is not really? my thing. Um I but, got a guy. Castle on the Hill Productions. I, I know somebody for you. <laughs> Go ahead. But I did find somebody. Okay. I did find somebody. Um, I, you know, Redified Marketing shout out. That's um, right. Uh, and he's done doing a great job with my social media. Good. Like the, the, okay. Um, the ads, the um, you know, the uh, content that he's putting out. Okay. This is amazing. Okay. Um, you know, and you know, he's really. Uh, Helping a brother out. So. Okay. That's um, fair. So things are starting to turn around. Okay. But, you know, they always say that first year, mm-hmm. first couple years of business, especially a restaurant, um, are always rough. Okay. Um, I don't receive that. You know, I receive that this next year will be the year okay. of, of harvest. Okay. Of uh, increase. So we find some Bible verses for us. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um. But, you know, things have been starting to slowly pick up, okay. um, you know, but, you know, I'm learning in business, uh, you know, it really is life in general. You know, you, you're going to take, you know, especially when you take a risk. Yeah. Right. Um, you're going to take, you know, some haymakers. You're going to you're going to take yeah. some some uppercuts. Yeah. Um, but it's all about uh, learning yeah. from the mistakes that you make um, and then also to. Um, developing a plan so that you're able to uh, minify, minimize your, your pitfalls and, and hurdles that you're going to encounter and uh, just, you know, rolling with the punches and just okay. coming back even stronger. Okay. Um, you know, defeat is something that I don't allow to happen. Might lose, I might lose a battle. Okay. Um, but definitely not going to lose the but war. But not the war. Okay. Yeah. I would envision, and correct me if I'm wrong here, though, like the underlying desire and passion for why you picked this industry and why this franchise probably helps cover some of those rough times. I would imagine there's a sign in our office here that says passion in the work, um, like mitigates the pitfalls. I'm not saying it very well, but does that help? Like knowing I am making a change in my community, does that help get over some of those hard times and the every mornings when you're like, I just quit? But that um, passion keeps you tethered? Not really? I would say that not necessarily the passion. Like okay. the vision is still there and it's strong, but it's just having a stomach for not giving up on your vision. Mm. Um, okay. a, a lot of people um, may have a vision or they, they may have um, a passion, you know, uh, but then they get that first big mm. uh, hit of... Uh, something's not working the way they want it to work. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now they're deterred Mm. or they give up. Okay. um, And they chase something else or they do something else. Um, And it's not, I've had other visions in life. I mean, we, we, as, as we live, there's multiple things that we either envision or we want to try or we want to do. um, But either that taste of, of a loss or that, mm-hmm. that, that feeling of, oh, this isn't going to work out 
often it deters us to go into a different route. Okay. Um, and you know, there've been other, like like I said, um, like one of the things. At one point, I wanted to own my own pharmacy. Okay. Um, kind of glad I did not take that route. Really? Um, okay. But uh, you know, I encountered early off a a pitfall where um, the person that I was going to buy their independent pharmacy from mm -hmm. um, decided they didn't want to sell um, a week or so before, before closing. You know, yeah. Uh, and so that kind of, I was like, well, uh oh, you know, yeah. what do I do now? Yeah. Um, so I kind of got deterred from from wanting to okay. open a pharmacy. And did I really want to open a pharmacy? I don't really think so. That okay. wasn't really my vision. Okay. Um, you know, but I say all that to say, um, that deterred me. And for years, like, you know, my own, my whole vision of owning my own business and, you know, doing something where I'm giving back to the community mm -hmm. was put on pause. I see. Um, and, you know, now it's back. God has a way, or way of bringing us back to something That's fair. Um, that we either wanted to do or we were supposed to do. Okay. Right. Um, and if you're supposed to do something, you want to do something, it's your passion, it's your goal, it's your vision. And if it's big, you're going to have, uh, you're going to run into an obstacle. Okay. How you deal with it is. Is the difference between success and failure exactly. I would offer. Now, have you found any mentors or pseudo mentors in this process that kind of help you over those hurdles that say, oh, when I was here, this happened. Have you found any benefit in that? I've had a lot of mentors okay. in my life. Um, in this time, I probably need more mentors. That's fair. We all need more mentors. Um, uh, I haven't talked to a ton of mentors through this, just a few, right? Okay. Um, I've talked to a few people, um, you know, gotten a little bit of advice, um, but there's advice all around, um, yeah. you know, but I do, I'm, I'm a strong proponent of having a mentor. Um, every mentor that I've had, I would say in my life has been, um, I won't say that I went out necessarily looking for a mentor. Mm, okay. It, it just was, kind of appeared. It, it just kind of happened, right? Okay. Um, it kind of happened where, uh, you know, either where it was a, a, a boss or somebody like that, mm -hmm. you know, they were able to give me advice and they kind of just grabbed me by the shoulders and was like, you know what, this is what you're going to do. This is what, okay. you know, th those type of things, um, okay. you know, kind of helped me, you know, I would say college, you know, pharmacy school, um, you know, my first few years of corporate America. And then mm -hmm. as I, at one point I wanted to climb the corporate ladder, mm -hmm. um, you know, a mentor definitely kind of helped steer me in the right direction. Okay. Um, in this, uh, business venture, um, I'll probably say that a mentor is something that I probably would currently seek. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what's next? We've talked about how you've gotten here before you started. The hurdles you had to overcome to get here, the successes, the doors are open, the food is good, the customer service is great. What's the vision? So um, from here, continue to make this one successful. Okay. Get this loan paid off. <laughs> Fair. Um, and uh, I want to open up others. Um, okay. I want to, uh, I had a vision of seven okay. in the DMV. Um, and... And then ultimately, I also want to to have a few gyms as well. Okay. You know, a few gyms. Um, and I want to start to really branch out into underprivileged communities. Okay. What else? So for those people out there that are looking at this episode thinking, I want to start a business. I have the drive, the desire, the underlying kind of North Star. What do you know now that you wish you'd have known when you started that might help somebody else? Um, I would say, um, if you think you've done enough research, you haven't, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. you've got to look at every avenue and not necessarily just jump out there, um, at something, um, uh, that you think looks great or shiny, mm -hmm. um, check references, check backgrounds, um, 
You know, and that's with everything. It could it could be mm. the bank, it could be the franchise, it could be um, your business partners or partner. Mm. Um, just kind of being aware of 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 people because everybody doesn't have your best interests at heart. Mm. Um, it, you you definitely have to do your research. Okay. And then before we go, I want to touch on the financing a little. Like, what do the terms look like for an SBA loan? Is it like a 10-year loan? Is it 15? Like, what does that look like at a very high level? 10 years. Okay, 10 yeah. years. And is it interest only or is it a balloon at the end? Or how does that piece of It's uh, prime, you know, interest, you know, prime okay. plus two half. Plus a number? Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any um, food for thought for folks comparing loan options like you did? It sounds like go find somebody to help you do it. But um, So one thing that I've learned now too, right? Um, mm -hmm. You can start off with a loan, right? But you don't necessarily have to stick with that loan, right? You can refinance. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Once I'm in a year or two, um, you know, and, you know, I've proven myself as, you know, a business owner, um, I'm able to either reach out to a, a you know one of the big banks that may have a much lower interest rate oh, um, and refinance and the refinance one that you have, the one that okay. they have. Um, and that may save money. So uh, when you look at your terms, you make sure you don't lock yourself into something crazy that you know that you're not going to be able to get yourself out of um, in the next two to three years or, or five, 10 years, um, you know, always look at other options. Mm. Um, sometimes loan may not be the best and a loan may not be the best answer. Um, also too, you know, I, I, um, invest in, in, uh, uh, council, right. So they, they have investment group, um, okay. or groups and, you know, you can do that. You can have a, a, a investment group you can create with friends okay. um, that you can pull together your money and, you know, you figure out how to, you know, split up the percentages. So there are other okay. options out there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fair. Just depending on uh, your level of tolerance and uh, where do you foresee yourself. But when you get into business with friends, you also have to make sure to, I mean, you just, your friends have a vision just the same way you do. Mm. Um, so it just depends on um, what the vision like is. Like laying that all out up front so you're marching towards the same end goal. Exactly. Okay. Anything else we haven't covered about business ownership, about thoughts when making that jump from corporate America to being a sole proprietor? Anything else you'd want a first timer or someone who's exploring becoming a first timer to know? Uh, I would just say have faith, mm. right? Um, believe in yourself, believe in what you want to bring to the table mm -hmm. um, and know that you didn't do it for no reason. Uh, and just, I, like I said before, don't give up on it. That's fair. Okay, so the name of this podcast is Coffee and Kale. It's mm -hmm. because those are the two things that keep me going. Coffee in the morning and kale at some point in the day. Even though you didn't like my kale juice, I won't hold it against you. <laughs> what about you? What are the... One, two, handful, couple of things that are your North Star that keep you going, that keep you charging up the hill every day. I'll say getting that morning workout in. Okay. Um, you know, the earlier the better. Okay. Um, coffee, which I'm trying to minimize. I feel like I drink too much coffee. Really? Okay. Um, but yes, it gets me going. Um, Love kale too, but you know, I have a salad shop, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But the big thing I'll say is uh, getting that morning workout in, um, okay. you know, staying healthy and, and looking forward to uh, the day and traveling whenever I get a chance to take a chance. Really? Chance to get away. Keeps you invigorated. Keeps me going. Starts I'm always living for that next trip. Uh, really? Yes. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's it today. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. All of you guys out there, visit Salad Works. What's the address again? 320 Florida Avenue, Northeast Washington, D.C. Okay. And comment, like, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye.